Welcome! The last few episodes we've been focusing on databases, relations and rollups. Today we're going to beautify our TV series tracker. We're going to take the excellent data structure we already created last time and we're going to design it to make it look a lot more beautiful. By the end of this I will make a template of this. Either you can download that directly right now or simply follow along to recreate the template exactly. Or do both. Compare what you did with the template I released. Alright, let's dig in. As you can see, one of the first things I do is cheat. We enable dark mode, so everything looks a little bit better. Nice trick, eh? Apart from that, we're going to start with the basics. We're going to add a cover in, a nice layout. And then we're going to show a few tricks to get around the fact that Notion really discourages you from using any type of advanced layouts. It's both a blessing and a curse. It means that you can focus on building things that actually matter and that the layout will look good enough. But it's actually really hard to make something truly beautiful. We're in no way going to end up with something that is like the best designed apps, but it's going to be quite a lot better than what we started with. Let's dig in. Let's start looking at how things looked where we left off. We're going to copy what we did yesterday and just do a quick rundown of the current status. As you might remember, if you followed along, we ended with creating a calendar. Before that, a nice timeline where we see all the series. This can be expanded to reveal the seasons, which in turn can be expanded to view the episodes. Towards the bottom, we have the actual database shown in table view. Also, that one is expandable and collapsible. We'll just quickly rename the underlying database so we know what we're connecting things to here. We start by adding a cover image. That's always nice to spice things things up a little bit. I'm picking this movie-like nice black and white poster which goes quite well with the dark mode. If you're truly ambitious you can size these to Notion's recommended guidelines to keep file size small and optimize the field of view, but we're keeping things simple here just to show a few concepts. Secondly, let's look at the title. Notion doesn't really support formatting the title in any meaningful way. What we can do is use emojis. In my mind, it's not really suited for this time, but it's good to keep in mind that it's something you can do if you want. What we'll do instead is a little trick to insert a space between each character, making for a nice, different looking text. As you know, you can also change the font of the entire page, but we're going to keep this as the standard sensory font for now. Going down to the calendar, styling options here are quite slim. You can switch between monthly and the newly released weekly view. I don't find them very helpful layout wise or making things pretty. They still need the full width of the page to work and you can't really do much with them. To start the actual design, I'm creating a three column layout. Then we're going to see how the calendar looks in a smaller format and as you can see things get very squished very quickly. We're now looking at the weekly view but it's the exact same with a monthly view. So not great when you're using a narrow column. You can resize columns, meaning that you can have some kind of intermediate format where you let the calendar take most of the space and leave just a thin column for the rest of the content. But honestly, even if you do this and even if you use the weekly view, the items are quite hard to read and I don't think it's that helpful. Finally, we can go into the properties of the calendar to add more things. But again, the issue is that the calendar really need the full width space to work. We'll keep the calendar here as a reference to the right and see what else we can do with the other two columns. Let's start with the list view, which is a quite compact way to visualize content in a database. As we can see, by default, everything is listed or mostly everything. So let's look into how we can limit the list a little bit. We start by sorting by air date, since we're looking to show upcoming episodes here. We then go into the filter, look at the different options. By default, we're looking is relative to today, but here we're actually going to change and look for everything upcoming. So everything after today. We then go in and add the air date. So we see both the title and the air date in the list view. And already to me, this is quite a lot more helpful than the calendar view. Although maybe the visualization leaves a little bit to be desired. We'll finalize by going in and changing the date type to relative. And that will give us a little bit nicer date formatting. 
an underlying issue we can see here is the choice we made to create very long names for everything. We decided to keep things super clear and say The Simpsons Season 34 Episode 15 Bartless, meaning that we get a very long line. This is not really something we can solve easily using the visualizations here, since Notion really wants you to show the name for everything. But we can do that and we'll look into that a little bit later with a slight reformatting of the source data to help the visualization along. Let's contrast this list view with a table, which is actually one of the more flexible ways of showing data. Here as well, we show the air date property so we see the relevant date as you can see it's expandable and collapsible by default that's something we can go into the options look at sub items and simply disable if you want we also go into filter and add a similar filter as before to show only upcoming episodes with the table in place let's remove the calendar view with that out of the way we see the table a little bit better by default, everything here can be expanded and collapsed and we see a very narrow view. Let's go into the layout and turn that off. We turn it off for this view only, so we keep it in the underlying database and for any new views we create. With this toggle turned off, we will see all the episodes individually, independently of what season and series they are connected to. Now we're showing the exact same view in the table view and in the list view. And as you can see, they are very similar, but there are some formatting differences. So in the table view, we don't have the little icon for good and bad. And the air date is also a large text as well, while it's much smaller and less obtrusive in the list view. This is simply up to you to decide what you prefer here, but you can see the difference clearly. As you know, the little tabs and the titles for each section here is the name of the view. You can set that to anything you want. So we change the table one to call it upcoming. For the list, we do the same thing and we call it this week. You can also set an icon for these views. And after changing the title and the icon, let's go in and fix the filter. So we actually look at a week from now. There are two options here. Either you can choose is relative to today and this week, or you can look at is on or before a week from now, which is the one we're using now. So now we're looking ahead one week. We're not looking at the current week. And since I prefer the table visualization, let's change the list view to something different. I think one of the best components to show things visually is the gallery visualization. So here you get a little preview card, a little box, and either you can show a preview of the content, you can select the cover image, or you can show an image property if you have such thing in your database. We're adding the date property here and then we go into the database and we go to card preview and instead of page content, we're choosing page cover. This will show the cover image of the episode. We also change this to small layout since we want to be able to fit a few cards. To show off what this looks like, we go in and add a cover image for the closest upcoming series. So here you can see the difference. To the left you have a very plain list. It's very useful, you can fit a lot of information into a small space. And to the right we're looking at more of a visual gallery style view. Let's move this around a little bit. So we have the gallery view first and then we have a list in the right column. And the really powerful thing to keep in mind with Notion is that since we're working with a database behind all this and we're creating views, we can actually visualize the same underlying data in multiple ways. And this is a great way to show that. And you can also use that for having multiple views with different filters, which we're going to look into a bit later. Going back to the source data, let's scroll down to the main table in the bottom and see if we can fix the issue with the very long names. To do that, we want to break it apart into a few different properties. So let's break out season and episode. We could do these as numbers, but we select the text property here, which gives us the opportunity to use the prefix. So S for season and E for episode, which you will see in a second is quite helpful when we start visualizing. If we want to use the full combined name in some place, a good idea here is to create a formula column. We call this full name and then we can concatenate 
simply join the different fields so we get a nice and consistent structure for the naming. We're running a bit low of space here horizontally so I'm gonna hide a column here and resize things a little bit so we see things better. Now with everything in view let's start filling in the data. We add season 34 to all the Simpsons episodes since that's the current one. For episodes we'll simply fill them in from 1 to 20. After that, let's make the name column the actual name of the episode and nothing else, since that was the whole idea with this exercise. We'll also sort the table by air date, so it's a little bit more natural now that we're changing the name. Perfect! With that done, let's go back to the full name column and let's make it a formula column. So rather than duplicating the effort of writing all the episode names in full, we'll use the concatenation functions of Notion. And either you can use the concatenation concat function or you can simply use plus to concatenate things. Notion is quite picky so you need to make sure that you concatenate text only. You can't have both texts and numbers in a single formula. If you do you need to convert everything to text or to number. So what do we want here? Well, we want the parent property, so we want to pick up the name of the show. After that we want to concatenate in our season and episode fields. Finally after that, towards the end, we want the name of the show. And then I also join in a few spaces and a colon in between to make the formatting pretty. For the episodes that have all the information filled in, the Simpsons episodes down here, Everything looks exactly as planned and if we scroll up a little bit to the Lazarus project where I've been a little bit more lazy you can see that the concatenation still works but we're of course missing a little bit of data. Going back to our gallery and table view you can see that they now look a lot better but they're also missing quite a bit of data. So let's fix that. We go into the properties and add the properties we want. So we add the parent for the show name and we can also add the season and the episode number. We look how things look with the season and episode numbers. Maybe it's a little bit too much for the gallery, so we can remove those again. You can of course also reorder the different properties, but as you can see the gallery view is very particular that it wants the name first, so that you can't change, but you can change the order of the rest of the properties. Let's go to the table view next. Here we'll do a similar thing. We'll add the parent property and reorder these. And in the table view you can actually put other fields than name first. Since we're looking at upcoming episodes, I'm putting the air date first here, then the name of the show and towards the end, the parent. Let's go into properties and also add the season and the episode columns. Let's start by minimizing the season and episode columns. After making them as small as possible, let's choose a nice icon for each column. Let's pause here and fill in the missing data for the last few Simpsons episodes. As you saw, we have a little peculiarity in Notion, so you can't minimize text field columns more than what we did, but you can with checkboxes. So a very nice trick, very good to know, is that you can go into a property, you can change its type to checkbox, you can then minimize the column or set whatever width you want. After that, all the data seems to be missing, but when you transform it back to a text column, the data is actually back again. So to recap, take a column that you want to be very minimal, only showing the icon, change the type of that property to a checkbox, minimize the size of the column, go into the property again and turn it back to a text. Handy when you know it, but very annoying if you don't. Right, let's change the icon for the parent column as well as the name column. Alright, things are looking up and are looking quite nicely formatted. Let's go to the next section and see if we can do anything with the timeline view. As we saw here, we have a nice possibility here to have the series, expand to the seasons and then look at the episodes. But similar to above, if we're looking at a functional TV series tracker and we want to look at upcoming episodes, it's not that helpful. And also, as you can see, we show all the data. Let's look at the data first. So if we do the same as we did above, we go into the filter and filter for air date. Something very interesting will happen. All of a sudden, when we look at air dates with a filter, you get a completely empty timeline. And this is due to the parent-child relationship. 
So we go in and we remove the parent-child relationship from this view. Then we see the date that we expect. So we see the episodes that are airing this month. What more can we do? Well, as we discussed, these views work like tabs. So let's duplicate the view and we can then have one timeline that shows the near term upcoming episodes and one tab that shows all episodes. We'll rename the tabs turn off sub items, visualization for both views, and add filters to make them work the way we want. For the timeline view, I think it makes sense to look at a longer time range, so we look at upcoming episodes in the upcoming month. Also in the timeline view, you can add the properties you want. Rather than as now, only showing the name, we can show the parent, we can show the seasons, and the date is of course already shown in the timeline itself. As you can see now, the episodes themselves don't really have a duration, so they're shown as a quite short little dot on the timeline, but I think it looks quite nice either way. Another thing that's good to know here is that most of these visualizations, most of these views, will use any icon you set. So let's spruce things up a little bit and say that we want to add a yellow icon of a man for all the Simpsons episodes. We do the first one now and you can see that it instantly brings a little bit more of a visual flair. You can do the same with the actual TV series, meaning that it will show up on the parent property. And this is a quite nice visual cue when you're just scanning across the document. If you want to generate cover images, icons or something else by default, you can do that with database templates whenever you create a new item in the database. I'll link that above if you want to check that out, but we won't look into that in this episode. As you can see, the icons look quite nice. Let's go through a few more episodes and add icons as well as cover images. With this done, the gallery view is looking really nice and the upcoming table view is looking a little bit more lively with icons as well. Another quite helpful thing you can do is to create focus views. For the timeline, we created two different time ranges. Here in the table view, let's create one for all upcoming episodes and one for just The Simpsons. This is as easy as just duplicating the view you want to have a second copy of that will keep all the columns you have created and all the formatting. Then you can just create a separate filter for that. Here we're going to filter for any episodes where the parent is The Simpsons. Now I'd like to show these two side by side, so I want a new column. As you know, Notion is a little bit picky with creating columns for rich components such as views. So we create a little text placeholder, new column please. We drag that to the right and we get a new column. We drag the content we want into each column, then we can simply remove the placeholder. After duplicating this, we got two copies of both Upcoming and The Simpsons, so let's remove those from each side respectively and keep only the one we want. We'll contract the table views a little bit, expand the gallery view, so we fit three episodes in the gallery view, and then we have two table views to the right of that. And here you can see the final result. It's quite a change since where we started, right? If you've been following along this long, I have a little challenge for you. We did a little trick with the database structure since last time. Have you spotted it? If so, write in the comments below what change to the structure did I do to make this work as nicely as it did. If you want a little hint, it has to do with the parent property. That's all for today, and as I promised in the beginning, I'm releasing this as a downloadable template, so just follow the link in the description and you can download a copy of this nicely structured and designed TV series tracker, totally in Notion. As always, you're completely free to just follow along the video and build it yourself. That's, after all, the entire idea with this video series. If you want to look at a specific section again, I make chapters for every section so you can easily scrub back and forth. As always, the YouTube controls for speed are quite helpful, so you can either speed me up if you think I'm way too slow, or slow it down a little bit if you really want to follow along carefully. That's all I have for you today. I'd be super happy if you smashed that like button. As always, I thank you very much for joining today and hope to see you next time.